Hi, it's Mike Stevenson. In today's video, we're going to take a look at a feature in Turbo 360 where we're going to try and use the Logic App Business Process Tracking BAM features, but we're going to use Turbo 360 as a much more user-friendly user interface so that we can make this accessible to non-developers. Now, let's start by having a look at what this really looks like from a like from an architecture perspective. So here. On the left hand side we've got our logic apps and this is the new feature that uh, Microsoft have added this business process tracking so what happens is when you've built your logic app you can build a tracking profile and you can map it to different logic apps so when the logic app executes the tracking profiles lives inside of the runtime and what it'll do is it'll project data into um, an ADX Azure Data Explorer database. Now, in the Azure portal, you'll have, so if we draw the Azure portal down here, we'd be able to query this ADX database via the tracking profile. So I guess more accurately, the, the diagram's a bit more like that. And we can see some of the, um, some of the steps that have been executed. But the problem is that, um, in the Azure portal, it's obviously only going to be accessible to somebody who's an Azure expert, who's got the right RBAC permissions and who's comfortable navigating the Azure portal. And there's, there's a few kind of advanced features I think most real world use cases are going to want that it doesn't really have. So this is why it made a lot of sense for us with Turbo 360 to add the capability to query ADX with our BAM module, a bit like we can do with Log Analytics and App Insights. And the benefit is we, we then take advantage of the Microsoft um, Business Process Track and Runtime, but all these users up here, you know, this, um, the support user over here, and the, um, the business user can now have an interface that's really easy for them to use. It's very intuitive, and they can get way more value out of the overall solution. And what we need to be able to do that is we just need the developer to put a few KQL queries here into Turbo 360, which will query the ADX database, and that will light up all of this functionality for those users, so it should be really easy to use. Um, the only real requirement is the developer needs a little bit of awareness of KQL. So... Let's next take a step down from this kind of really high-level architecture and look at a solution example and let's understand how this would play out. So in my solution here, we've got messaging coming from rail cars out traveling around. They send messages via a partner to my API. I drop these onto service bus and then we pub sub them to different applications. So in the in the Logic Apps solution, I've obviously got my business process tracking over here. So if I do BPT, and these Logic Apps will be sending data up to business process tracking, which will go through to ADX. Now, I can then sit Turbo 360 on top of the database and query that. But the other benefit with Turbo 360 is logic apps aren't the only solution in this use case. So we've also got things like App Insights over here and things like my Function App and my API Management will also be streaming telemetry, potentially as well as my logic apps to App Insights. So what that means with Turbo 360 is we can create a query that um, in the business process view can pull in data from both data sources and create a holistic view that would make it really easy for us to um, you know to basically see what's going on so hopefully at this point I'm going to take a step down from the architecture solution view let's have a look at what this looks like from a user perspective so here I am in the Azure portal and I've got a business process view here. So this is my Railcard GPS process, which has a process name inside it. And what I can do is I can go and view some of these transactions. So you can see here, I'm quite limited as to what I can see. So I've got 
an event ID and the number of stages completed. I can click on one of these and you can see here I've got the steps that I went through. Um, so message received, processor complete and then the two updates completed there. And you know the, the really great thing is these events came in after I deployed my logic app, I deployed my profile. I didn't really have to make any instrument change, uh, instrumentation changes for this. But it, it's quite limited the diagram as to how I can interact with it, what I can do. I can't easily resubmit this stuff. Um, and there's a few limitations. You know, I can click on here to see a bit, a bit of metadata, but I can't really search for them. I can only really search by event ID, but I've, I've obviously got some values promoted here. I can open up the workflow run, which is really quite nice there. That's quite cool. Now, if I take a look at the editor here, so this is where I've designed my um, track and profile as a developer. So that you know the the um, logic app developer's gone in here. We've created created these stages, created the properties. I'll have done some mapping from them, so I can map success and failure properties, and I'll be able to create the correlation between this stage in the business process and which logic app it runs at. Now, I then deploy it, and when my logic apps run here, I wouldn't actually see in here anything to do with the business process tracking profile. It's just a standard logic app, but in the ADX database, under the hood, I'd have a bunch of data coming through to this database, so we should be able to query this. So you can see we get all these events in the database and I can explore what's in the events. You can see down here I've got some of the some of the JSON properties and some of the metadata. So with um, Turbo 360 we can basically write some queries for this um, for this particular data here. And what I'm able to do is if I go over to Turbo 360 now, you can see I've now got this tree structure where my different business processes are so I've got a folder here called the transport department and here I've got a rail card GPS um, business process now what I'm able to do and we'll show how we achieve this in a minute so here I've got all the transactions that have been going through the system so I've got my event ID but I also have my load slip and my rail car and the success so these this grid's really a comparison versus the grid we saw um, over here. So we, we can see that you know, the grid here is quite um, unhelpful unless you, knew, you know the event ID, but here in Turbo 360, I could search for all the transactions for this given rail car ID, for example. So you see, so there I created in the last seven days, here's all the events related to this rail car. You might have noticed when I was um, keying that in, I accidentally clicked on it, so I can click on one of these events and it'll go and do some sub -query. So if you imagine in Turbo 360, there's really a, a parent query that creates the grid and then you open a transaction up and it'll execute a bunch of child queries, which are the, the different stages you show and then they light up green or red depending on the map in between the status of them. So for example here, I can click on message received I've promoted a bunch of metadata out of the um, out of the um, KQL query result here. I've also created a click-through URL. So here I'm, I'm in a different browser tab, but if I copy the link address and I go back over to here, then we go to the run history for that um, for that instance. So that would open up directly from here if I was in the same tenant in both browsers. Now, one of the things you might notice is. Um, only some of these stages come from business process tracking. So for example, the API management stage over here, I've, I've actually queried application insights and I've pulled out some of the data from the log message in App Insights and I've managed to correlate it from App Insights to the Logic App and I can kind of create this holistic view. So hopefully um, what I'd like to see is that this becomes quite usable from a support operator who's not very comfortable in the year through to a business user to be able to answer their own questions and do you know, with a very basic amount of 
um, train and they can do some searches for transactions and see what happened and if they were successful or not. Now we can also add other features such as dashboards. So here in, in addition to the tracking view we've also got a dashboard so I can create my own custom dashboards and I can use the KQL queries and in my case in this demo they could be from ADX or they could be from App Insights where I can use the transactions I've modelled or I can put my own raw KQL queries in here to show things like the number of transactions, number of events by rail car and that kind of thing. So I just build up what I need here so I can present to my business users and support users how things have been going. Next up we've got the monitoring. So here I can use a query monitor and I'm running my rules every every hour at the moment and down at the bottom here I've got a query for failed events so basically in this query I'm just looking for events you can see in the little tooltip there events where the end status equals failed and if I get more than one an hour I'll raise an alert and sort of tell the user there's a warning if I get more than two in the last hour, I'll tell the user there's an error. And I can even put a little note in over here if I want to. Um, I can also very easily add additional queries. So if I add my own query here, I can drive it from the um, transaction model and that I've done. And I can kind of build up how many, you know, how many events I need to break a threshold and that kind of thing. Now... At this point, the question's right. We've we've got all this nice functionality, nice user-friendly experience, easy for a, a business user or a support user, particularly things like the tracking view, so we can see how the car, you know, in this case, the rail car transactions are being going. How do I actually make this come to life? So over here in the transaction area, this is where we'll model out our view. So really, as a developer, I'm going to be building a transaction so here I would add a new one but we'll just in this case edit the one I've got and you can see I've got the name rail car events I've chosen the type as data explorer so really you know I've got a parent and a child query here so the parent query in my case is going to hit data explorer it's going to use this instance with my business process tracking database and I've created a KQL query down here where I'm basically doing a join, looking for the start event and of end event to create a kind of a row that I want to show up in the tracking grid. Now we'll have um, in the documentation where this video will be, we'll have some helper queries to help you get started. And down here I'd create a mapping, so we'd pr promote some properties. So in here you can see I'm promoting the event ID, but I can also promote other properties I want. And these um, properties here would be available in the child queries to find matching events. I then have things like the, the unique ID. The, these ones here are optional, but the, the promoted one's going to be required. So I can specify start and end time. I can also do some mappings down here for statuses. So if, you know, if the, um, if the, I think this one's going to be event end status, if it's like fail, it means it's a failure, like success, it's a success. And I've got additional options for batching down here. If I've got like parent-child relationships in these queries, I can model that out. So that would give me the role in the tracking grid, and it would monitor the status of it. And then next, what I'd be doing is I'd create these child um, queries for each of these stages. So... The first one here is a, um, so this is one for API management. So you'll notice here, I'm actually using App Insights this time. I've chosen my App Insights instance. And then I've got a, a KQL query down here to pull out the event I'd be looking for. And in this case, I'm, you know, this curly bracket event ID is where I'd map the event ID property that I promoted on the parent down into the child query so I can look up for a, um, a message that matches. So you can see here I've actually looked for the, the event ID that matches. Now the next one's going to be from business process tracking. So you can see again where using Azure Data Explorer and I'm, uh, I'm mapping here where the correlation ID is equal to the event ID and I'm looking for my rail, rail car events um, 
table and I'm looking for a message that's um, a message received and that basically is going to find the matching event I can promote additional properties out so you'll see here I've extended some of the properties so I've got like a nice list of columns that I can show in that grid when it opens up and then I can do once I've got my query that does the mappings sorry identifies the columns I can then do my mappings here so if I want to promote more properties I can do it from here I can set my mapping for my failure and success scenarios and I can choose to indicate whether it's um, what type of component this is executing at and really I just repeat the scenario for any other stages on the grid and as long as the queries find the right um, the right data then if I go back over to my tracking view so I can click on one of these and that's how all my child queries light up. So, you know, from a developer perspective, it's going to take you 10, 15 minutes for a business process, configure it, and then you push it out. And then you can basically you can let the support users, the UAT testers, the business users can go and search for their own transactions, can see what's going on, and they can just raise like an issue that they can't fix themselves they can raise to you but questions like did we did we receive an event for real car number one they don't have to bother you as a developer with that they can check that themselves in turbo 360 now because you've used business process tracking um, so hopefully that hopefully that's a nice quick video to show you how you can take an azure integration solution to the next level empower business users and get um, some really good visibility of the value that your integrations are delivering. Thank you for listening to today's video.